hair follicles, sperm, and bile for the investigation of diminished hair growth and the hair growth promoting compounds. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to present our latest data here in front of the audience of the World Hair Congress. I'm going to talk about our ongoing approach to establish a heterotypic hair follicle spheroid model for the to further investigate the mode of action of our product Pantovigar that is used for the treatment of diminished hair growth. Pantovigar is clinically effectively proven. About 90% of the physicians as well as the patients rated the product as good or very good. The treatment resulted in a significant improvement of the percentage of hair and energy. Due to this clinical success, we tried to get a deeper understanding of the cellular mode of action of Pantogar. Therefore, we established a limited growth assay system that mimics the situation of diffuse hair loss. We generated a minimal growth media, MGM, without the typical cell culture growth enhancing additives, and we omit the supplements provided by Pantovigar. Then we supplemented um, this MGM with Pantovigar. This is our Pantovigar in vitro correlate PSC. We could clearly show that the metabolic activity as well as the proliferation is clearly increased by increased PC PIC concentration. And furthermore, we could show that after a 200 millijoule UVB irradiation using a solar simulator, the metabolic activity of the MGM cultivated cells is dramatically decreased and the amount of the apoptotic cells is dramatically increased, whereas in the PIC situation only a small decrease in the metabolic activity and only a small increase in the apoptotic cells could be detected. So we conclude that our PIC is able to protect our keratinocytes from UVB um, irradiation. To go now one step further away from this 2D culture system to a 3D culture spheroid system that mimics more closely the hair follicle, you could show, see in this schematic drawing the dermal papilla surrounded by the follicular keratinocytes resembling the hair matrix. And we tried to use now these cells, the dermal papilla cells and the follicular keratinocytes to establish a heterotypic hair follicle spheroid model. We used the so-called liquid overlay method to form um, spheroids and therefore we covered the wells with agarose to avoid cell attachment, centrifuged them to bring them in close contact and after 24 to 72 hours a nice spheroid is formed. Using now our DP cells the spheroid formation is possible but using our follicular keratinocytes or our interfollicular keratinocytes no formation could be observed. To establish now a heterotypic hair follicle, we use different ratios of these two cell types, 1 to 1, 1 to 2, and 1 to 8. And the spheroid could be detected with a ratio of 1 to 1 and 1 to 2, but by increasing the number of keratinocytes, only cell aggregates, but no spheroid could be observed. It is well known from the literature that DP cells change the expression profile and lose their key inductive properties when we're cultured up in 2D. But um, after 3D cultivation in a spheroid culture system, um, they at least um, could show um, um, again their, their properties to induce. On the right side here, you can see different genes um, that are known to change their expression from 2D to 3D. And now to validate this spheroid as a more hair follicle spheroid, um, we performed UPSA analysis and we could show that um, from 2D to 3D, um, the expression change of the here shown gene um, is in an expected manner. So the DP ability of hair follicle inducti inductivity is restored, confirming the hair follicle nature of the spheroid. Sorry. So now we, uh, we established a real-time analysis of spheroid formation. Therefore, we used fluorescent microscopy. And here you can see in this movie, at the beginning, the blue-colored dermal papilla cells are in the rim of the spheroid, whereas the um, green-colored keratinocytes are more or less in the middle. And in now in um, time-lapse, you can see the, um, the formation process after about two hours, 
a, a loose aggregate and a dense aggregate and after 24 hours a spheroid is formed. Now we can um, suggest that um, in the middle there are the, um, the green colored keratinocytes surrounded by the blue colored dermal papilla cells. But to further analyze this hypothesis, we used another method um, with a light sheet based microscopy that allows us a non invasive look inside the spheroid. And in the next movie, you can see the spheroid going um, in different layers, going down from the top to the bottom of the spheroid, starting here with the dermal papilla cells. And now in the middle, you can see there is a green core of the keratinocytes surrounded by the dermal papilla cells. You can see it here again in these pictures. To, to further use now our MGMPIC model, we cultivated the cells in, in PIC and we could observe a nice spheroid that is stable over a period of time. Whereas if we culture the cells in the MGM, we could observe only a dense cell aggregate that is disintegrated over to time. <coughs> so the spheroid formation in the MGM um, culture failed, probably to a low extracellular matrix gene expression, and that could be observed by um, gene analysis, and this is shown on, in another poster here in this Congress. <coughs> to summarize now the results, um, we could um, use a heterotypic spheroid with a DPFG ratio of 1 to 1. The hair follicle nature of the spheroid was confirmed by qPCR. We established two systems to monitor the cellular distribution within the spheroid formation process and after formation within the follicle itself. In our model, the FK accumulate to the core and the spheroid um, is surrounded by the dermal papilla cells. And with our MGM PIC model, we could show that MGM is not able to build a spheroid, whereas supplemented with PIC is able to restore this capability of spheroid formation. So this could be another functional hint regarding the action of Pantobica in the hair follicle. Last but not least, I want to thank our cooperation partner, the physical biology, Ernst Stelzer, Nare Manansari, who helped us with this microscopy techniques, my supervisor, Harry Abs, and the group members, Kim Schlinzi, Christina Riegel, and Sasia Krishok, who supported this project. And I want to thank you for your attention. When you look at your spheroids, how similar are they with respect to, say, alkaline phosphate expression or, or other gene expression? Have you ever looked at that? Um, so, in, in case of size and so on, they are very similar. And we um, checked that in 2D cultivation, the dermal propeller cells for their activity of alkaline phosphatase. And after 3D, or after spheroid formation, we again check the alkalase phosphatase, and then it, it's, 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 uh, it's rising. So in the 3D situation, we have a higher alkaline phosphatase activity. But, but when you compare the 3D spheroids to each other, yes. are they heterogeneous? No, they look, they look similar, pretty similar. Any other questions? First, I'm not in part of the spheroid culture, 3D culture. So, uh, for your culture, do you usually uh, use the general you know, culture dish, or is there any some kind of specific culture dish? If, if I use special culture dishes? Yeah. No. no. Just normal culture okay, dishes? So, and okay. So how, okay. How did you control the number of those uh, spheroid cells? So, I, I watched very interesting poster of there. So I think it's better to you know for you to watch that poster. So they you know, one Japanese group, you know, uh, I'm not sure the name of that group, but they divide the cell number of the, each spirit, uh, spirit. So each um, experimental group showing the different gene expression. So I'm not sure your data is very quietly, you know, attractive to understand, you know, make understand other people, something like that. But 
you know, if you cannot control the number of the each cell inside of steroid, I don't think your uh, data is critically right. I'm so sorry, but I think it's better to go to check. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, were you surprised when the organizer of the keratinocytes on the inside, would you have expected the keratinocytes to self-organize on the outside? And secondly, um, you said that it gave a functional hint when you added the PICs to the way that um, your compound is acting. Is that through aggregation, migration, do you think it's affecting the signaling? Um, what do you think is happening there? Okay. Uh, first question, uh, we thought, uh, we, we really didn't know which cells uh, go in the, in the, to the core or uh, stay outside. And uh, so we thought that due to the centrifugation process, the, the carotinocytes um, go, in, go into the core and the DPs are around them. And then due to the formation, they will stay inside the core of the carotinocytes. So it would be better the other way around, you're right, but we, we try to um, establish these um, microscopy techniques and with two different cells to, to follow the formation process. And the second question, um, we could show in uh, another gene expression analysis that um, the PIC cultivated cells show a higher expression of extracellular matrix genes. And that's why we thought this could be the reason that um, the MGM cultivated cells didn't form a, a, a proper spheroid. Okay, thank you.